You forgot something, Fisk. Something you should have remembered before you decided to put a bullet through someone too old and frail to get out of the way. And it's this. For all your money, for all your cruelty, for all your big talk, you don't have any real power. You can't fly, can't stick to walls, can't turn into living flame or stretch out across a 20-foot room. At the end of the day, you're just a fat man with an attitude. A balloon just waiting for someone to stick a needle in it. And me? I'm the needle. Get up, Fisk! I said get up! Balloon. Needle. Now. Here's how it's going to happen. I pour a stream of webbing deep into your throat, your esophagus, all the way down into your lungs, filling them completely. The only way to remove it surgically would be to cut out your lungs, which could not possibly be done before you die from lack of oxygen. I turn your entire respiratory system into one big solid chunk of useless tissue and webbing. It takes three seconds. One, two, three. Oh, I will. I said I was going to kill you, and I am. But I didn't say I was going to do it today. You see, I've learned something from you, Fisk. Something about cruelty and timing. I've done something far worse than kill you, Fisk. I've beaten you. And every man in this room saw me beat you. And they will tell their pals. And those guys will tell their pals. And on and on. And soon the whole city, the whole country, will know what you already know. That you've been beaten in public, one on one. And for a man as prideful as you, who needs for everyone to believe he can't be beaten? That's the worst pain you can ever feel. I want you to live with that knowledge because I know it will tear you apart deep inside every waking moment of every day. I want you to live in that kind of personal hell. I want you to burn Fisk. For a while, at and then, <laughs> you see, I've always tried to avoid killing anyone, partly for my own principles, and partly because I was always afraid of how it would affect my family if I killed someone. But if my aunt is dead, well, that takes care of one reason. And the other, well, I can make an exception. So, here's how it's going to happen. The moment my aunt dies, I'm coming back for you. And we're going to finish what we started. And as of right now, you know, you know that there is nothing you can do to stop me. I will come to you, and I will count. And then, you'll be dead. I swear to you, on my life and her soul, on everything I hold dear, you'll be dead. Meanwhile, 
still live with the memory of this moment. The humiliation of this moment. And the message of this moment. Which is directed at the rest of you. And everyone you know. Put the word out. If anyone comes near me or my family again. If anyone even touches them or anyone else who matters to me. You will experience firsthand what happened here today. You touch them, you die. Painfully. Slowly. Definitively. You ordered her death, Fisk. So it is only appropriate that your life ends when hers does. So if I were you, I'd start praying right about now to try and convince God to give her every possible second of life. But to tell you the truth, in your position, I wouldn't count too much on God if I were you. See you around, Mr. Fisk. Count on.